Both right. Could you hold the map a bit straighter? Thank you very much. Now, you may know that every Ollivander's wand, thank you, has a core consisting of a powerful magical substance, thank you. We use unicorn hairs, phoenix tail feathers, and the hot strings of dragons. And no two Ollivander wands are the same. Just as no two unicorns, dragons, or phoenixes are quite the same. A wand of holly. It's 15 inches long. It's nice and supple with a, ooh, a dragon's heart string core. Now, let's try a spell, shall we? Let me see. Oh, let's see if we can brighten this place a bit by illuminating the tip of your wand. Now, just hold it up in the air and say, Lumos. Lumos. Nicely done. Oh, oh you're, you're very powerful, my friend. Meteorologies! Three cattle! Well, very powerful. But that is definitely not your wand. Don't worry, hold on to it. Be careful, we'll come back to you. Don't want to mix them up. Your turn, my dear. A wand of reed, also 15 inches long, rather bendy, with a. Also, a dragon's heart string core. There we are. Now, let me... Oh, oh yes. I'd like you to ring that bell there. Just one time, one time only, please. And let's try a non-verbal spell. So, when you're ready, just give your wand a wave. Right ahead, my dear. There we are. Nice. Oh, oh how very interesting. Closer, you're both doing very well. Now, my friends, it's it's always been very clear to those of us studying wand lore that the wand chooses the wizard. But it's not always so clear as to why. Tricky customers, aren't you? If I may, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> 